Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here on this beautiful Monday in January. So today I always like to go and read I Have a Dream by Martin Luther King. It's such an inspiring uh, speech, uh, just something that I like to start my year with on this day uh, every, every, every year for many, many years now. So I hope you'll go read it again as I will. It is also uh, Fig Newton Day. <laughs> Are you a fan? Are you a Fig Newton fan? I am, but I recently had them and I I didn't like them as much as I used to. I used to like them a lot. So I don't know what the deal is with that. Maybe it was the day I had them. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do Scrappiness is Happiness. We have uh, some quotes by you and Q&A. So, oh, and our, and, our, and our organization stuff, of course. So let's first look at Scrappiness is Happiness, which is a so long we're doing with this book from Lori Holt and the Fat Quarter Shop. Uh, it has been, this has been so much fun for me because I'm using a fabric line plus adding in fabric of my own. So the next block is a string block, which is again, another classic scrappy block that many of you have done and so it is a lot of fun and I taped this prior when I was making the block so let's go to the other side. This week it is the traditional string block which is usually done on a foundation and that's the way this one was done on an interface foundation but I'm going to do mine just on white fabric because I just don't really feel like hunting up. My interfacing is all fusible and so I don't really have an interfacing that's not fusible right now and so a piece of fabric will be just fine and the quilt is not going to be super heavy because I'm not doing like the whole thing with regular fabric that'll add that would add weight if you did a whole quilt like this. Uh, so uh, here Lori showed that she varied this width of the strips that makes it a little bit more fun. Okay, so let's see, what do I have? I have a piece of white and I am going to oversize it a little bit and then I can trim it down. So I will probably cut uh, about a nine and a half inch square, you know, something like that. Where is that? Okay, so this will be what I'm going to use for the foundation and then it'll be trimmed down afterwards and I'll go ahead and try her ruler when we get to that. So this is the eight and a half inch ruler for, you know, it's got like for fussy cutting and just trimming of blocks. Okay, so I don't need that white. And it's done on the diagonal. So of course you could do it any way you like, but this is done the diagonal. And I saved all of these blocks. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, all these strips. I saved these strips from previous. And let's see, so I'm gonna intersperse like this one short, so it'll probably go down there. And I'll just lay out what I want. I'll go through the bin here and pull out a variety so that I can have a little bit of variety. I'm gonna to have to cut them because I don't really have any other strips from this line. So I'll cut a couple of blues, I think. And I have that yellow down there but let me just pull another yellow and then I think I will do um, one of the stripes, a piece of the stripe and maybe this guy. And so, and I think all of that will be enough uh, to lay it out. Uh, then I will go ahead and sew it and bring it back here to trim. So here we go with uh, all of the strips done. Here's the back, so the back looks like, and I'm sure Lori is demoing this on her YouTube and that quarter shop might also be demoing it. So uh, you can probably also see about 800 other videos for string blocks that'll probably do the same thing. <laughs> so I am going to use a ruler now and just square it up to the size that we need. And that is what this exact ruler is. This is an eight and a half inch square. And I am going to use the back just because of all these tails, you know, I think I'll just use the back side. And this is the center strip right here. So I'm just lining that up along the center as well. Nothing too hard about this. Okay, then I'll cut it to size. And we will have our one block. Now, if you were doing a whole quilt of these, then, you would just keep going, going and going and going. It does, it is nice to square up uh, sometimes with a ruler that's the exact size of the block. You know, no lines to figure out. You just are cutting the size of the block. 
And there we go. So voila. Here we have our block. Oh, that's so cute. That turned out really cute. Now this one little piece here, it turns out it got mostly trimmed off and actually probably didn't even need anything there. And I might just go and take it off because let's see, because what's going to happen is let's look underneath the turquoise. Yeah. The fabric underneath goes all almost to the end, except for see the see the little white tip. But that's going to get sucked into the seam allowance. So we'll see. I might just take the white piece off so that I have less bulk in that seam allowance because it's not really going to do anything. Most of it's going to be sucked in. Yeah, we're just going to do it now. I'm just going to go ahead and peel that off so that piece wasn't needed. And now that where there's no fabric on that very end of the white, that'll be enclosed in the seam allowance. And so there won't be any problem. And I had the block. So we'll go over and put it up with all the rest and see how it looks. So I did put the sashings on already. For, um, you know, they, I didn't have them there when I was making it, of course, but I put the sashings on already because my goal is to get all the sashings on everything. When you go to my website today, you'll see this in place. It goes way up at the top left. I can't reach there without getting on the ladder. So I will just leave it on the board for the video. <laughs> Oh, okay. Our, our challenge today is thread. Uh, and we did look a little mini challenge the other day just to sort of tidy up a little bit. Now I personally don't really need to address, I should maybe not have quite as much thread, but let me explain. <laughs> let me explain officer. Let me explain. Um, so I work with Orifil thread company and also even prior to that, I was kind of a thread junkie for cotton thread because I hand applique a lot and then started machine applique. You use thread colors that go to the, that match the fabric so that it sort of blends in and you don't, don't see the stitches. So that meant, meant I needed a lot of colors. Uh, so, and I still use a lot of thread colors. You know, I don't piece just with white or just with gray or just with black or anything like that. I piece with all kinds of different colors of thread because that's more fun and I have it. I also have thread collections with Orifil, but I will show you my um, boxes that I use because I have quite a bit of thread. So there's a lot of colors, but this is not new for me. I have been like this since I started quilting. So if you are also someone who has a lot of thread, today is your day to uh, look at it and decide, is it organized enough? Is it suiting you? Is it doing what you need it to be doing? So first of all, these are my thread collections, my more, my, you know, my main collection. Sometimes I have smaller collections that go with like um, a project or something, but these are with Orifil. They are, I was going to show you the inside of that one easily. <gasps> Yummy. And then I've got the big spools or the main size spools. Those are the little ones. So these are all my collections, uh, the neutrals. Okay. So these boxes are what I have. I have a bunch of these boxes. Now, one thing you have to note is the lids just sit on here. Okay. They are not clamped down in any way. So if that is an issue for you, this will not be the box for you, but I will link the box in the description box and under the video at my website. So here I have a bunch of the green thread, both the big regular size spools and the little spools, all the different shades. Uh, and so that's what I do is I keep them in the box primarily by the shade. So this is yellow and orange because I couldn't fill a whole box with just one or the other. So perfectly they could go together. And so these stack in my auxiliary storage, uh, around the corner here in the other room, uh, they don't stay in this room, which, uh, because I don't have space in here and I don't need to get in these all the time. That's what I have that little bunch of threads over in this cabinet so that I can get to them easily without going, going through the boxes here. Uh, but your threads today, take a look at them and decide, you know, do you have some more of them that you can wind off that they're low on the spool? Do you have um, thread that maybe you're just never using? Maybe it was given to you, was somebody's stash and then you just still have it. You know, maybe you could give those to the charity group to use some, you know, something along those lines. Or maybe you've converted from one brand of thread to another get rid of the brand you're not using, whatever you're not using. That's basically the goal. If you're using it and you intend to use it fine, you know, this is an organization video. It is not a um, minimalist video by any means. <laughs> My organization month is not a minimalist month. It's not to get you, it gets to just get you organized. So, and that entails 
things that you may not be using anymore, you take a hard look and decide, yeah, I'm not using that anymore. I don't intend to, and I'm not I'm in love with it anymore. So that's kind of where the organization stuff is. All right, before we go to the Q&A, I have a little mail call from my friend Ruth. Ruth is in Maryland, and Ruth is actually married to the husband of one of the men I worked with for many, many years. Uh, so I got to meet her that way, and she sent me this beautiful, beautiful, she called it a rice bag. So, and she said that the stitching post in Oregon, uh, that's where the pattern was from. Isn't that great? And she's so cute. She put the beads there. Mwah. Thank you, Ruth. Oh, she sent me this beautiful card, too. Got to pick that up. Look at that with the quilt on it. Ah, so nice. All right, let's do, let's do the quilts by you. I've got block number two from the Sweet Childhood Memories, and they are fabulous. And you'll see like how varied they are. So let's take a look. We'll start with Adela's block, which has a beautiful green and red, and I love that floral in the middle. How pretty is that? Gotta love a beautiful floral. Charlene's has another floral. I like the black framing on this one, and then the single spray of flowers in the middle. Debbie's has got Minnie Mouse. Oh my goodness, look, Minnie Mouse with, she must be in a balloon. Yeah, balloon in the one in the blue fabric with little banners. Oh, this is so cheerful. Now I want Minnie Mouse fabric. Della's is gorgeous in gray with a little splash of yellow there with the floral. He Jeans has got this absolutely darling fox in the middle and look at the beautiful red fabrics. Love, love, love this. Joanne's is another beautiful block. I like how the navy just goes with that green. You remember how I say navy and green? It is so classic in whatever combination you do. Julie's is so cheerful. I love that turquoise. It looks like like sort of like a retro feed sacky kind of print. Really nice. Carla's is gorgeous. Look at this plaid with the um the roses in the middle and then all the garden in the four corners. I just love it. <laughs> I love it. And I know Carla loves to garden. Kay's is so happy. I the fabric border there, well the not the border, but the flying geese border, the background, the floral is fantastic she picks up the blue there in the middle kelly has this is the same fabric some of the same fabric that carla's using uh, at least the rose print is just beautiful and looks so different laura laura who's half point if you're here in our morning chat uh, she is one of the ambassadors for my community and she made it into a pillow with these super cute gnomes red red everything red and uh, Laura said that she actually had this gnome fabric in her stash. How lucky is that? Mary Jane's has also got red with, look at the little ducks in the middle. But this red in the flying geese with the white print, that is so effective. It just makes that block sparkle. Look for fabrics like that and see how you can use them to create these really interesting designs. Mary's is blue, blue, everything blue beautiful beautiful block she picked up uh, a shade of blue from the main like floral there that grassy and used it in the flying geese two more we've got Nellie is this made just made me smile just a huge big grin all of these rope um, the um, spacecraft <laughs> space fabric there we go I got the name just so darling and that's it because I thought I had two more, but the last one was actually mine. So I'll show you mine again. <laughs> there it is. We'll start the Q&A uh, with something I had to film first so I could show you an example. So Shar asked, what do I do with the blocks if they don't fit in the blue block box, you know, project box or whatever project box you use, if they can't lay flat? Well, I've never been one that worried about my blocks laying flat uh, while I'm storing them. That just isn't a thing that entered my head ever. Uh, so. This is what I've been keeping the Scrappy Distant Happiness is, and now that I've got sashing on it, they're just folded. It's just folded up, and then I took this, take this whole thing, put it on top of the box. I know some people will hang them on hangers and do things like that, and that's just never been my gig. I don't have a closet to hang them in, so it wouldn't do me any good to put them on a hanger, but uh, that is something. If others of you have ways that you store blocks that you don't want to fold, uh, put it in the, uh, Put them in the comments below. Okay, let's do the rest of the Q&A. I've, I've got to go put these on the wall for the rest of the video. <laughs> 
Well, let's go through the rest of these Q&A questions, and these are ones that were left at YouTube, and they're primarily about this organization stuff, maybe one or two that aren't if I get to them. Uh, so we had a lot of questions about where did this red cart come from. It was from the container store about 15 years ago. I'm going to pop a, a little picture up here of the manufacturer, which is Italian. And you can go to their website in Italy and you can see it in their catalog. They do not sell to the public. I did not find anybody selling it in the US. So if you are a sleuth and you want to find it, go for it and let me know where you found it. Okay, Kathy asked, uh, do I ever use my part center blocks, you know, these extra blocks for the backs of quilts? Uh, rarely, rarely. That's kind of not my focus. Oh, I had two of these left from the other so long. Yeah, that's not my focus to go in there and create backs for the quilts. That takes longer, and I do create blocks from back, blocks on backs of quilts, but that will be when I've purposely had them from that quilt. Uh, I don't go in here and get them. So Linda says, when do I consider a quilt finished? Is it after the top is done or the binding? She doesn't. She's struggling to decide on where to put the date. Well, if you're going to date a quilt, if you never intend to quilt it and you're going to put some sort of a label attached to the top, then put all the dates on there. Uh, if you intend to quilt it, then put the date you quilted it because that's when you finally finished. At least that's how my brain works. Terry asked, does a UFO include kits that you never started? So first of all, I am not the UFO czar. <laughs> you can decide what is a UFO. And, and, and make your own definition, an unfinished object or an unfinished project. For me, if I bought something and I never started it, it's not unfinished. It's just a kit or a set of fabric. I consider unfinished projects ones that have been started and not finished. Uh, Chris asked, uh, she said her local quilt shop went out of business after, and she bought a bunch of bolts for cheap of panels. So a bunch of panels for very inexpensive. So she wanted to know for some ideas of how to use those. So that's a perfect question to go over to ask in my quilt community, quilt along with Pat Sloan at Facebook. So go over there and ask it because there people will show you a picture of what they've done with their panels and you will, you will be so inspired. So we can't show that here. I mean, I can't go collect them. You can just go over there and ask yourself. Uh, Mary Jo wanted to know if I have an estimated time for making another quilt from the random bonus blocks, you know, the part center. No, I don't have a time frame. Someday I'll start to make them. Uh, Sharon, okay, let me just wait on that one. Uh, Lou asks, speaking of dust, do I ever use dust covers? Do I put dust covers on the Solaris? Do I do dust covers over on the Jubilant? Uh, no, I really don't use dust covers. I never have, so yeah, that's just me. Um, Susan wanted to know, uh, why do I store my my scissors in the top drawer since that's a prime area well they're not the only thing in the top drawer so they are in there but I also use my scissors just because I collect them doesn't mean that I don't use them I use them I have them photos I like to look at them and if they're in the top drawer I get to see them and so the very last one I'm going to try to squeeze this in Sharon wanted to know if Greg my husband Greg has hobbies oh, yeah hobbies hobbies out the uh, yeah the man has lots and lots of hobbies. He doesn't do them, he'll do them and then not do them for a while, then maybe pick them up again. He is a photographer, he collects cameras, he's a ham radio operator, he just got three levels of licenses. He has licenses for uh, operating the drone. Um, uh, he's done woodworking, um, car stuff, yeah. Planes, trains, automobiles, you know, anything with an engine uh, he likes. He uh, flies radio, some radio-controlled aircraft. He is a private pilot. He has a private pilot's license, although is not flying right now. So those kind of things, yeah. So, yeah, he has way more hobbies than I do. Way more. <laughs> oh, he also has a motorcycle. So, <laughs> All right, my friend, you are going to do your scrap block. There it is of uh, string, string block. So that's a lot of fun. Use up some of those strips that you might have around, uh, even left over from the project. So and sew some together even. I didn't think to say that. You could sew a few pieces together to make a strip as well. All right, I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. Be sure you go through your thread today and make uh, whatever you're going to do about it. You know, work on that today. 
So I will see you online. <laughs>